I welcome you guys to class once again. Nice to be here. Hope you are, keep, uh, you are staying safe. Now, before we go to the main lesson for today, I want us to quickly have a recap of what we learned in the last lesson. In the last lesson, we looked at the meaning of indirect rule, the factors that promoted indirect rule in Nigeria, and the success of indirect rule in northern part of Nigeria. Now, I made it to understand that indirect rule was successful in northern part of Nigeria because of centralized administration and also because of the presence of few educated elites in the northern part of Nigeria made indirect rule to, to be successful in the north. Today we are looking at indirect rule in Yoruba and Igbo nations. Indirect rule in Yoruba and Igbo nations. So our objective for today we want to look at the meaning of indirect rule, which is the continuation of what we learned in the last week, and we want to evaluate reasons why it succeeded partially in the West. In the West, we are referring to the Yoruba. And we want to look at the reason why it failed. We want to analyze the reason why it failed woefully in the East, talking about Igbo nation. So let's go into the lesson. All right. What are the reasons that made uh, indirect rule to succeed partially in the West? Let's look at them one after the other. Centralized administration. Like the House of Fulani system, where they have centralized administration, like I told you, centralized administration favored indirect rule. So you can see centralized administration favored indirect rule. However, unlike the House of Fulani system, where they have emirs could not be questioned, in monarchical system in the West, in the Yoruba land, like I said, when we were doing pre-colonial administration in Yoruba land, I told you that the pre-colonial administration in Yoruba land was a democratic one. The upper could be questioned. So the monarchical system in Yoruba land was a limited one in which the upper could be called to question. So now that actually made indirect to be partially successful and partially a failure. All right, let's continue. Another reason why indirect rule was partial success in Yoruba land was that the presence of educated elites. The elites were not employed into the civil service, and they, they, always, are, they, they always had a reason to criticize the government. So for, for one thing the government failed to do, or for the other thing it failed to do. Also, the system of taxation introduced by uh, the colonial masters was actually strange to the people in Yoruba land. So it did not go down well with them. So that made the system in Yoruba land to be a partial success and a partial failure. All right, let's look at the system in the East, talking about Igbo nation. Now, why? Did it fail woefully in the East? Now, if you can cast your mind back to what we learned under the pre colonial administration in Igbo land, now I made it to know that Igbo land practice what we call stateless society, egalitarian society, a democratic society where everybody is equal, everybody had a say. So they never had a centralized administration. So it became so difficult for the colonial master to actually build on that system. So they wanted a system that had a centralized administration. So one of the reasons why it failed in East is that absence of centralized administration. There was no centralized administration. So there was nothing they could build on at that time. Also, the system was a democratic system. There was a democratic institution. And in democracy, you fight for your rights. As a matter of fact, people will have to question the authority, why must this be this? Why is this this way? You know, in democracy, everybody has a say. Also, the appointment of warrant chiefs, because there was no centralized system on ground, they had to appoint warrant chiefs who will be taking care of the control of the system. And that did not go down well with the system. And as a matter of fact, the wild sheep became autocratic. And that made the people to kick against them, that it was actually strange to their system. Also, indirectly introduced taxation. 
And as a matter of fact, taxation was strange to the Igbo people. And that led to Abba Women Riot of 1929. If you can remember, the Abba women, the women who were working were being taxed. And as a matter of fact, the women were not, not, they were not happy with the fact that they were being taxed. All right, lastly, the Igbo people were highly educated before the coming of, uh, of indirect rule of colonialism in Nigeria. They were early educated. But uh, people like Zig, you know, Azikwe, people, these people were, they were educated before the coming of colonial masters. So the king against indirect rule because they were educated. All right, with this, we shall be learning more in our Google Classroom. See you then. Thank you. Thank you.